All right. I'm here with Coach Manny Gomez and Coach Mike Uribe. Gentlemen, it's been a different offseason uh, for, for the entire Valley. Um, you know, an administration for you, Coach Uribe, and, and uh, Coach Gomez at Harlingen. What's it been like for you guys to kind of go through this? This is the first, state, the first time this has ever happened. Go ahead, Mike. Well, um, obviously, the, the catchphrase has been the new normal. So getting to, um, to our day-to-day -day processes and making sure we're still servicing our kids and taking care of our own personal family has been a challenge. Uh, but, you know, like everything else, we learn to adapt. And, and I think the people that adapt the most and accept our current situation are the ones that are going to be the most successful. Yeah the, the, uh, yeah, the word that he uses, adapt, is a key word that we, uh, we've learned to do as a coaching staff, man. And just as human beings, you know, you have to adapt and overcome, man. You don't, you don't ever adapt, you end up losing, man. But, uh, you know, we've learned to adapt uh, remotely is the word that we use a lot here in Harlington. Uh, and we, uh, same, the same app that we're using right now, Zoom, we use it with our kids. I was talking to, to I was telling uh, Jake right now, Mike, that we had about, I think it was about 58 kids in the morning on Zoom. So we're doing that. We're reaching out to them every morning and we're taking role. We're not holding anybody accountable. We just simply want for these kids to, to start getting some kind of routine, man, because routine can can get you out of this funk, you know, out of this cabin fever. I think we're, 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 we're tagging that this morning. But it can get you out of the, that funk, man. So that's the one thing we're trying to get these kids to do and not being, not, not staying up till three, four o'clock in the morning, you know? So, but uh, at the same time, they still, they still have prerequisites. I mean, requisites for them to, uh, to do classwork to do and stuff. But yeah, uh, yeah, we did that yesterday for the first time. So we're gonna be doing that every morning at nine o'clock. But yeah, the word is adapt and do it remotely. And it's definitely working for us right now, yeah. Now, uh, you know, I, I have to ask these questions because you guys have known each other for a very long time, you know, since high school? Before yeah. high school? Since, since middle school. Since middle school. We didn't start hanging out till later. He's a year older than I am, but yeah, uh, I, I kind of looked up to him in the seventh grade, and he was in the eighth grade, and we just kind of followed each other, started playing each other with each other in high school. What What were you two like in high school? Were you guys the? Um... We were a national honor society. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, I, I I I joke about it, but I believe Mike Mike, you were probably on it. You know, Mike's a smart cat, man. You know, I'm not saying I wasn't smart, but I was one of those guys that can adapt and overcome, right? But, uh, no, we got to know each other at a young age and stuff. And, uh, you know, I'll fast forward real quick. I'll fast forward real quick to a story that I felt that was uh, kind of solidified our – really solidified our friendship was, was I believe, was my senior year, actually. And uh, he jacked up his car, and he was kind of sweating it. And he's like, man, I don't know what I'm going to tell my dad. And, and I just told him, dude, you're going to tell him the truth. You're going to tell him the truth, man. And, you know, it's going to be whatever. I said, dude, I'll go with you. So I stood next to him while he told his pops what went down. But uh, you know, that's the only story we'll, take, we'll tell you about some of the <laughs> nonsense that we got into. But now, nah, anything you want to share, Mike? Oh, I mean, since, since uh, we did our past kind of led towards the same career, I, I think one of the things that, uh, that gave me the uh, utmost respect and admiration for, for my friend there is, it's just his, his, his work ethic and his dedication and how he held everybody accountable. Um, you know, growing up in Harlingen, uh, you know, as young kids, we, you know, I, I remember as, you know, going to the games with my family and, and wanting to, to grow up to be like the guys up on the field. And, um, and, and I, you know, I idolized them type of deal. And, and uh, I'll never forget um, his senior year, my junior year, we're, we're playing against Converse Judson and, and, uh, you know, there was the, kind of the first time that whole season that we, we had a lot of difficulty with our opponent. Obviously, they were a top-ranked team in the state of Texas at the time. Uh, but I was more concerned with letting my teammates down, specifically our captain, than, than anybody else. And, uh, you know, I, when, I think I got, I got toasted one time on a well, – actually, a couple of times on a, on a pass route. And, uh, and he got back in the huddle and he goes – um, right. Who, who's, whose responsibility was and, and, and I go, it was mine and he goes well fix it and, and that's in my opinion uh, motivated me more to play harder when you when you, when you, uh, when you care about the guys that you, that you sweat with and bleed with you know 
Now, coaching wise, did you guys, you know, I, I know you guys would play in the preseason, but did you guys ever have a regular season game against each other? No, no. And we actually had conversations like that. Uh, um, uh, you know, I think I've, in over time, I've, I've got a little bit more calm, but uh, we're both very passionate, competitive people. And, and our friendship is extremely, extremely strong. So I think we consciously made an effort not to play each other in the regular season unless we had to uh, because, uh, because of our friendship. And I don't want anything to, to harm it because when you go out into battle, you know, it's one of those deals where you're going to do everything you can to beat them. And, and in some cases, sometimes uh, uh, it, gets, it gets personal. <laughs> but we've gotten, we've gotten better. I've gotten better for sure in, in handling the differences between uh, – between, life outside the white lines and life inside the white lines. Yeah, like it's like anything, man. After a while, you, you kind of get used to the same old roads and stuff. But one thing that I learned, you know, I learned back in, um, in 2000, yeah, 2011, you know, prior to that, as a young coach, man, you know, here in the Valley, it was all tunnel vision. And, um, you know, it, it was just one of those deals that I was like, man, it's got to be better than this because in the Valley, it's just like everybody just wants to not network, not, you know, reach out. So 2011, uh, we're playing Abilene. And, you know, first, I've never First met, game of the season, right? No, it was uh, our third game. Our third game, I believe. Oh, okay. We were, it was our third game of the year and uh, got a chance to meet Coach Steve Warren. He was a the president of the Texas High School Coach Association about maybe five, six years ago. Anyway, man, so, you know, in pregame, we're talking, man, and, and I was like, man, you know, this guy was very genuine, uh, very friendly, and I was not used to that. You know, usually back in the Valley, it was like everybody, like, to each their own, and, you know, like, I never really liked that, man. To me, I think this should be fun. In our profession, we should be able to, you know, get along prior and then that. And then during the game, of course, we want to tear each other's heads off. But, you know, that was an experience that I think that made me into who I became as a coach, as a head coach, because, man, we, we talked in pregame for about 45 to an hour, me and Coach Warren, and it's like, it seemed like I've known this cat forever. You know, we build a relationship after that. You know, we, uh, we learned uh, after the game. I remember I asked them, you know, um, Hey, how do you guys? Because they blocked, I think, three of our field goals. And uh, I said, How do you guys practice that? He goes, Coach, every Tuesday we go six live. So at Harlingen, every Tuesday we go six live, you know, good on good, extra point block. And, uh, you know, but I learned that, you know what, it doesn't have to be like it is in the Valley where it's just a tunnel vision where, you know, it's like, you know, I don't know, pride, I guess, you know, too much this arrogant pride. And instead of being more like a, a friendly, hey, man, you know, so I've learned to do that ever since. I, tr I at least try in pregame after 2011 at, to go and shake the hand of the, the coach and wish him luck and, hey, man, you know, have a little conversation or whatever. Um, because, again, that's just something that I, I learned from, from Mr. Mr. Warren, man. And, and I thought it was one of the best things that I've ever did besides, besides you know, an answered prayer, you know, because uh, they kicked the extra point. I was there. I, re I remember San Antonio. Yeah, they, they kicked the extra point to tie it. We had a 15-yard a penalty because we hit the we hit the uh, the snapper, and they took the points off and they went for two, and they ran that same wildcat formation. We only had stopped it only one time pre uh, previous, but the kid fumbled the ball and he picked it up, and we were able to hit him in the backfield. And I think he missed the end zone by this much, and we won by one point. But it was a. Uh, it was a game of a lifetime, man, and I think it, it said a lot of things. It opened a lot more uh, uh, doors for us at HHS, at Harlingen, man. And, uh, but nonetheless, it was a big win. But the most important thing in my life, in my profession, was that, was that relationship that I built with, with Coach Warren. Uh, fast forward, I think, three years later, he's the president of the Texas High School Coach, Coach Association, and he assigns me to be the, uh, the 5A. We didn't have 6A at the time, 5A selection all-star committee. He, he, he chose me to be a part of that. And uh, that's where I got a chance to meet uh, Drew Sabota, who's not Rice, uh, uh, Ricky Tullis, who's not Pearland, you know, and several other coaches. Uh, uh, Warren's brother, who's at Wimberley. 
So you build relationships after that. And it was just a, a great honor to be a part of. And it was just a great year. So yeah, for sure. You know, you, you mentioned 5A and now there's 6A. You just had realignment. And uh, it, it was interesting because, you know, there's a lot of jockeying and, and, you know, you guys are worried about like last year or last two years, you guys have had a smaller district. Now it's a little bit bigger. When you have to, like a lot of people think that coach is just coach. But there's a lot of there's a lot of behind the scenes things. First of all, what was realignment for you like this year? Um, and then, were you expecting more uh, more movement this year as far as the, uh, coaches? I don't want to well, say fi- I don't want to say fired, but you know. But w- were you expecting that? That's from both of you guys. Mike, you can you can answer that first, Mike. Uh, in regards to movement, you know that I've obviously experienced it myself. So a lot of times there's different factors that affect the movement of coaches. And in and, and some cases, yeah, I, I do seem some su- surprised that, that, uh, you know, decisions were made in, in specifically for me when maybe decisions aren't made in other places, but it, it is what it is. You know, uh, um, every situation is individual and there's different circumstances. I, I look at these uh, challenges that I've had personally as opportunities to grow and develop and, and continue to be persistent and move forward towards uh being where I feel I belong uh, but you know it's hard for me to judge uh, uh, any other specific location because I'm not there and I don't know what what goes on there and what's the ins and outs and and an outsider's perspective might not even be close to what's really going on on the inside. Well, let me ask you this uh, Coach Uribe were you surprised when Donna made the moves that they made real late in, in the in the offseason? Uh, was I was I surprised? Uh, I, I said it, it's hard to answer because, like I said, I wasn't really in in the in the know what was going on there. Um, I, I I I know they've had some challenges the last couple of years, but but I've known both those coaches and I respect both of them uh, a lot. You know, I, I had a lot of interactions with them on a professional and a personal basis, and I think the world of both those guys. So uh, being in their shoes, you know, like I said, it's hard for me to to have an opinion in regards to to how it went down because because I wasn't there. Hey, hey, Coach Gomez, how did you feel about like realignment? Um, because it was a little bit better for you. You didn't have to go all the way to uh, to Permian to play football. <laughs> I tell you what, man. Um, the the only like analogy I can share I, I use about this is like I know everybody when they were kids, man. They saw that cartoon, the Wiley the Coyote chasing the Roadrunner, dude. That that is what it was going to Midland. <laughs> You know, nothing but mountains. What's funny is that if you're going through all mountains and, and actually saw a couple of goats up in the hills and but you don't see anything, you don't see anything else. And then all of a sudden you get to Midland and it's just flat. You go from, you go from these hills to, to flat land. But uh, don't get me wrong, you know, it was, I built a relationship with coach A to Z. I can't pronounce his name, but he goes, just call me A to Z, Midland and Midland High. And, uh, you know, build a relationship with him. And, uh, you know, we had talked already that if we stay in the same place, we've been playing in San Antonio instead of going home and home. That was actually a, a decision that was made. I won't mention who made that decision, but it was more of a money thing. And uh, and I was like, you know, I, 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 I'm going to make this decision, if anything, because it shouldn't be about money. It should be about the kids, our kids and their, and their safety. But uh, yeah, we already had talked about it, that we'd play in San Antonio, but I was just... I said a few prayers. I ain't gonna lie, because I did not want to. I did not want to play those guys anymore. Uh, not that we couldn't handle them. You know, we would kind of return the favor the following year. We played them here at Harlingen. It was actually on my birthday, but you know, it it, it is what it is. We play anybody, but I, it's one of those things too that uh, you know you kind of get tired of the travel, and it does take a toll on on uh, on the coaching staff. It does take a toll on the kids. And uh, finally, we were able just to kind of stay in the valley for once, and it worked out. So what's the one thing you guys want to do? What's the first thing you're going to do whenever this uh, quarantine or stay at home is lifted? <laughs> what's, what's, what's the first thing you guys are going to do? Like, well, when I get back to work, I'm just going to appreciate the, the interaction I have with people. Uh, what, what you may not know, Jake, is um, I had foot surgery prior to this quarantine situation. So I was already in self-quarantine for a couple of months prior to this. So I feel like an extended solitary confinement. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna learn to appreciate the interaction I have with people. 
uh, and, 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 you know, obviously God puts us in, in, in different situations for different reasons and different places for different reasons. And so, uh, again, my, my biggest goal is to, to, to kind of embrace why I chose pursuing education and, and athletics and, and that's to, to help others and, and to kind of pay, pay it forward. I, I think a lot of things that, that, uh, that motivated me in my life is the way that I was molded uh, growing up not only from my parents, but from my coaches and my friends and, and, and educators. So I think that's why I gravitated towards going towards the uh, education route. I could have probably chosen to pursue other professions, but this was my passion. And, uh, you know, that's that old saying, you know, when you, when you uh, enjoy what you do, you never work a day in your life. And, and that's the way I've always felt it. That I got up every morning and excited to go to work and, and, and impact kids and, and work with people. And that's, that's what I look forward to doing just, just embracing those opportunities, even though the uh, decision of me moving to administration may not have been exactly what, what I had chosen. Uh, it's an opportunity for me to impact. No, I kind of like, like to re reiterate that. Uh, embrace, man, uh, for sure. Walk in my office and just embrace a bunch of kids, literally hug them, you know, hug them and go a little crazy, man, you know, and uh, we usually do a group hug. You know, at times we we have about 180 kids together. We all group hugging. For sure, we'll have a group hug and then uh, throw the love in the air. What we do back, boom, and get, go crazy a little bit. But you know, bottom line is, it's simply just like Mike says: is learn to appreciate the little things, man. And it's just loving on embracing, embracing what you do and and uh, impacting kids is 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 why I feel that people like myself and people like Mike have been put on this planet just to be able to impact kids and help kids uh, through the hard times and prepare, and prepare them for uh, times like this. But uh, don't get me wrong, it's real, man. It's a, it's a, it's a real thing that, that we're dealing with, but you know, we're, I'm a man of faith and uh, know that totally God's in control. So only time will tell. What does this do? Okay, I got two questions. The first question, the, my last two questions. The first one, I guess, is for both of you. What do you think this does, this, this, uh, being away from football, what do you think it does to the kids as far as what you're going to have to do when you come back and hopefully at the end of summer, what do you think it does to them as far as, you know, uh, game preparation, all that kind of stuff, the speed? Well, for one, like, um, we're trying to do the best we can remotely. And, uh, you know, we're not, we're not going to go as far as Alabama, Alabama, bought uh, those Apple watches uh, for every player so they can monitor their every workout. Um, we're simply using Twitter. Uh, we're using Twitter and uh, actually, actually Zoom. And I believe everybody has it in the Valley. It's called Remind. So we have a Remind app. Our strength coordinator sends out the workout. He, uh, he sends out the workout through Remind but then he also illustrates it on Twitter, okay? And he uses, uh, you can look him up, it's Mike Aguilar. I think he has it at uh, Harlingen Strength and Conditioning, uh, at, at Harlingen Strength and Conditioning. And uh, he illustrates everything. And sometimes he'll use his wife as to squat. You know, he'll use uh, a case of water for more resistance it's because there's nobody, sometimes a lot of our kids don't have weights at home. So you have to improvise. And uh, again, what, what is it that some somebody has in their house right now? It's probably cases of water. So he does he does uh, illustrations with it, and of course, every day is something that uh, we're hoping that these kids are uh, are doing. We do challenge them. We do challenge them to post their workout. And I would say that right now, I would say about seventy percent of the kids are doing that. They're doing the workout and they're actually posting it on Twitter, and uh, for accountability purposes. But don't get me wrong, we're not. We're being very considerate, very compassionate about, about these times, but the kids are holding themselves accountable. And that's one thing I've always told kids, guys, look, if, if the team is held uh, to a certain standard by the coaches, we ain't going to be very good. It's when the team's held to a certain standard uh, by, the, by each other, it's when the team's going to be great. And that's what's happening. A lot of these kids, you know, they're, 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 they're like branded by position. You know, every position is branded by a certain way, a certain saying. I won't say some of the sayings that they say, but but a certain saying, and uh, they live up to that. So again, every little tribe, I guess, 
has their own way of doing things and how they hold each other accountable because it's a standard besides an expectation to play football at Harlingen. And uh, it's something that is working really well for us. We're blessed to have kids who are uh, excited about the game and uh, are doing great things. But uh, at the same time, you know, we want to make sure that it's always family first. Family is always first in what we do. So it's important that, that uh, they're doing what needs to be done in the household before they're out there doing their workout and stuff. But uh, Mike? Well, no, I mean, I, I, I agree completely with what you said. You know, obviously for me, being in administration right now, it's kind of a different deal. But I do want to commend the coaches that I, I do follow on, on Twitter and Instagram and those different platforms uh, and, and showing the communication that they're continuing to have with their, with their student athletes. To me, it, it shows, uh, you know, the passion that they have for their profession. It shows the importance of, of, of athletics to these young people. Uh, again, I think it makes it a little bit more uh, bearable for these, for these young people when they have these role models that they look up to. And, 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 and sometimes I, I tend to forget that, but I, I reverse back to when I was a young person and how much I looked up to my coaches and my teammates and, and, uh, and to see that these guys, uh, you know, posting – uh, motivation, inspiration, and support to these to these student athletes. Uh, it, it really makes me proud to be in this, this profession. Hey, uh, real quick, y'all got to see. I, I don't know if y'all can see it. Coach Regalado. Yeah, from PFJ Memorial. Yeah, yeah I saw yeah, that. Dude, it is freaking crazy. You know, and uh, I can't wait to meet this cat. I, I think I met him one time, but I now definitely want to meet this guy but well, just is, so you know coach Gomez he uh he does something when he has free time he, uh, coach Steinbrenner's uh, restaurant he yeah. plays live music there and really? he sings on the side yeah uh, the whistling duck coach Steinbrenner which you know coach Steinbrenner coach Barry yeah. um uh so he's out there when, when when this gets back to normal maybe we can go out there and and watch this this young guy this young coach uh, uh play some music and tell some stories no, for sure, man. It's uh, you know, it's good to see. It's good to see stuff like that right now, man. You know, everything on on TV right now is all so serious. You know, don't don't get me wrong. It got me in a funk for like a, a first couple of days, man. Watching this news, it can make you feel sick mm -hmm. to your gut. But but anyway, it's like, but uh, now for sure, uh, that guy's hilarious, man. But like I said, he's a uh, he's it's awesome. So so uh, yeah, if you haven't, uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll retweet it. It was uh, I watched it. Uh, Yesterday, I think um, it's a good take on head coaches and OCs and all that good yeah. stuff. Hey, <laughs> that's, but, what makes it, that's what makes it most comedy funny, the reality of it. Yeah, very much so. And there, there's a reality here that I wanted to ask you guys about. You know, Coach Oliva, you've been wanting to get back into the game. You know, um, and, and Co Coach Gomez, you've been at Harlingen for, what's this, how many years has it been? It's uh, oh, when did 20, you I think it's been 25 years. I got there in 95. Wow. So yeah. let me ask you this um, for both of you, because uh, I know Coach Uribe, you want to get back into the game. Coach Gomez, how long do you want to coach for? Uh, you know, you know how, how long do you guys want to keep this going? You know, because uh, football takes a lot out of you. It's a long season. It's a long preseason. Um, you know, well, well let, let me, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but let me answer that because a lot of people have said, man, don't you feel that is a great uh, change of pace for you? You're, you're off at five o'clock, you know, you're not working weekends. And so I started working in 97 there at McAllen High School as an assistant. Um, so, but this is all I've known. And, and I've learned to appreciate the grind as we tell our kids, right? Appreciate the grind. And when that's all you know, in regards to work, and, and as I mentioned before, when you love what you do, it's not, it's not work. Uh, so for me, for this last year that I've been in administration, uh, again, I, I appreciate uh, the school district and, and the opportunity I've got to learn and grow academically and, and, and administration professionally, but, but I miss the grind. I miss the smell of the grass. I miss the early mornings. I miss the sweat. I miss, I miss all that stuff. Now, my body may not hold up that long, but, but, uh, but it's something that I really enjoy and passionate about. You know, uh, and I think, Coach Gomez, you, you, you probably saw it on social media that there was something – where it was like kind of a big old coach on the sideline and, and a guy was running off and he goes to chest bump him and the kid goes flying. It was kind of one of those deals with the coach. And, and my son had, had sent me a, a message on it. He goes, hey, dad, this looks like you. And, and to me, it, it, he, even my young 13-year-old son realizes my passion that I have for athletics. You know, 
Now on, on, the, on the flip side, since I didn't coach this year, my son's a, a seventh grader and played football and basketball and things of that nature. And, and I was able to go and watch the ends of his practices and go to his games and be part of that. And that also prices. So it's a give and take. Well, honestly, my wife wants me to work for the next 20 years, man. Nah, <laughs> nah. nah. Um, the way I see it, man, it's like I see Nick Saban grinding. You know, he's 60-something. You know, Coach Ed. You know, I know Coach Coach uh, Sweeney. Those guys are up there in age, and they're grinding, man. Don't get me wrong. They get paid tons of money. But, you know, I, I don't do it for the money. But, you know, to answer your question, man, I, only God knows – uh, but I like I would love to retire at HHS, man. You know, and uh, that's the only place I've ever known. I've only been on on to I believe it's four four high schools besides Harlingen High School, and one of them is I was at Mercedes when I went to go see these guys practice when he was at Mercedes. I went to go see their practice. I think they were doing some form of spring ball or something. And I've been to to Judson. Uh, I met Mark Soto there. He was the intern. And then I went to Steel on that same day. Mike Jinx was at Steel. I've been to uh, Lake Travis. Uh, that was what four years ago. I, I felt stagnant, and so I flew myself up to Lake Travis and hung out there with those, those guys. They just opened the door and walked in, and I was able to hang out with them for a day and a half. And that's all I that's all I've known as far as high school football. And there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of parity in, in at every middle at every school that I went to. The only thing that's different, a lot of the things that are different, is just the size of athletes. You know, we have kids in in the valley, not just in Harlingen, but in the valley that have D one, D one All American hearts. Okay, but you know they got the size of a five eight five nine cat. You know, and. Uh, but it is what it is, you know. That's something that when that when that message I put on early on, I mentioned that we have that that fight in our heart here in the valley, as an athlete that's going to help us get through this. But uh, you know, as far as how far or how long do I want to I want to coach? I want to coach as 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 long as I can. You know, uh, I stay in shape for I stay in shape for many reasons, and one of those reasons is to be able to still. You know, set an example of I have to get in a three-point stance or whatever, show a kid something. I want to be able to do that. Uh, and plus, it's been a part of my life, man, since I was a freshman, you know, uh, to work out and grind. You know, yesterday I was out there running, like, hundreds on the street and doing push-ups and stuff. And my daughters, my daughters were doing the same thing. So it's kind of like a family affair, you know. My wife was also doing some things, working out and stuff. So it's a family affair with us, man. And the uh, it's a it's a good little hobby to have. It's it's a it's a it's a part of life that I know that can help with stress and you name it. But do we miss football all day? You know, my, and my family's all about football, man. And uh, my my wife's fa my wife's father was a coach, so it, it's kind of like a whole. It's it's embedded in, in our in our DNA here at at, at, at Gomez Land here. Uh, but not just that, even Mike. You know, he's a product of uh, of Harlingen, and and it's just a. Uh, it's in our DNA here in Harlingen to, to grind and, and uh, when tough times show up, we, we, we don't just step in, we take over kind of stuff, you know? And, uh, but again, this is an unprecedented time right now with what's going on because it's, it's surreal, man. It's to the point where you have to be, uh, you can't be close to people. And that's one of the things about what we do. We're so used to just embracing kids and being a part of, of, of it. But, you know, who knows? And like I said, it's in God's hands and the only time will tell. But for right now, it's, you know, we're going to do the best we can today and take care tomorrow. Tomorrow. All right. And this is one thing. This is a college question for both of you. All right. When you were in college, Coach Gomez, and, and Coach Uribe, you can, you know, tell me this is true or not. Was he ever confused with Samoan? <laughs> <laughs> You have no idea. You have no idea. And again, we can't go into all the stories, but you have no idea. I don't think many people thought he was Hispanic. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. But but I do. Hey, I, I'm sorry to change the subject, but I do have a story before I, I forget. We're talking. We've been talking about our past and our histories and how competitive we are in our relationship. When we, when we were young, when we were young coaches, um, 
and, or even in college, you know, that's when video games were, were kind of the thing to do when we're in our early 20s and stuff like that. Well, we were so competitive and, you know, Manny's one of those guys that's, that dissects games and stuff like that, whether it's a video game or an actual game. So I think if I played him 100 times, I might have beat him once, maybe. Uh, but it would get so bad that, that I would leave his, his place without even saying goodbye because I was so upset that I lost. Well, now my son has played him a handful of times, and I think Manny's won about two or three. My son's won about two or three. And uh, so I get a lot of joy seeing the tables change where now my 13-year-old <laughs> and Coach Gomez have gotten – to be hey, you tell each them, other. We can play online here in about an hour. Right. <laughs> you got it. You got it. You got it. But uh, hey, Jay, going back to your initial question, man, that, that was that was one of the first questions that was asked me by a teammate. He was from California. Uh, he was an office, office alignment. I can't remember his name, but he comes up to me and says, hey, man, what island are you from? This was, a, this was at Kingsville. And I was like, South Padre Island, bro. You know, I told him like that. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, I thought you were Tongan or uh, Sanaa, Polynesian. Sanaa, man, I'm just Hispanic, but it's just the the way we look. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's not the first time, man, that that that's happened. It, people have always com compared me to Polynesians, but you know, Polynesians got big calves, bro. I don't got big calves, you know. <laughs> but, but, man, yeah. I don't know if you remember Paul Katoa. He, he yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. we had a guy that w that was actually he was Tongan that played there in Kingsville and. His, his girlfriend, who is now his wife, was from Hawaii. And and the nicest guy, the big, big old monster of a guy, but the nicest guy in the world. But he kept on telling Manny, come with us to Hawaii. They'll think you're a local. You'll have a great time. And he kept on trying to convince them to go because they were convinced that he was, you know, Polynesian. Yeah, we uh, we went. We were blessed to go. My my father, my father-in-law, you know, they're blessed. They were they took our family, I would think maybe about 10 years ago, Um uh, to Hawaii, man, and it was it was awesome, you know, it's for sure. Don't get me wrong, you know, we were we were talking about maybe someday going back again, but you ever have an opportunity? Hopefully, we'll be blessed someday to be able to go uh, take take trips, man. You know, uh, you got to make it to Hawaii. It's, it's it's for sure beautiful, beautiful. Well, gentlemen, I, I appreciate you guys taking the time to to uh, to do this this first episode of Cabin Fever. Uh, it's been uh, eye awakening. Thank well, yeah, you. I Thank you for the invite. Yeah, I appreciate you having us, man. And uh, it kind of breaks the monotony, but it's all good, you know. And uh, stay safe, be safe, man. <laughs>